Hi friends and happy Monday. Welcome to another Coffee Chat with Gems. I'm Cindy Voltima, your host, and I am so super grateful that you are here. I wonder how your day is going, friends. If you are in Michigan, I hope that you're able to soak in this amazing sunshine wherever it is that you're watching from welcome. Go ahead and leave a comment and let us know who you are and where you're watching from and how your day is going. I hope it's a marvelous Monday for you. In case this is your very first coffee chat, let me tell you a little bit about GEMS. GEMS is the go-to ministry for girl spiritual growth. Our headquarters are right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, although we serve girls from California to Canada to Kenya and everywhere in between. And we are passionate about seeing girls grow up strong, secure, and confident in Christ. GEM stands for Girls Everywhere Meeting the Savior. And it's not just our name, it's our mission. And one of the things that we do to help impact today's girls are take a few moments on Mondays to pour into you, the moms, the mentors, the ministry leaders that are walking alongside the girls in your life. And we like to talk about the challenges that are weighing our girls down or tripping them up and bring some alongside that can help you, give you hope and practical tools as you journey with the girl in your life. And today we're going to talk about a very important topic, eating disorders. I mean, the stats out there are staggering. They say about 30 million Americans struggle with an eating disorder. And then when you hear about the stats about our girls today and how many of them are dying to be thin, we recognize that this is an area that we must talk about. And so for today's coffee chat, we're going to do just that. And as I was thinking about this, I thought, who do I know? Who do we know at GEMS that could come and speak with practical tips, but also from a heart perspective? Because if you're a mom or a mentor and you're walking this journey, not only do we want to know the facts, but someone that could understand. And so we have a very special friend here with us today. Jordan Carson. Now, if you are from West Michigan, you know the name Jordan Carson. She is a TV host on 8 West. You also probably have seen her with the Live Local, Give Local um, campaign, and she's the director of that for WOT TV for women. And she often is connecting with foundations and nonprofits all across West Michigan to help make a difference. She's also a wife and a mom to a delightful little girl, and she has a beauty inside and out that radiates everywhere she goes. I've had the chance to share cups of coffee with Jordan, and wow, is her heart for this important topic so valuable. She's passionate about eating disorder awareness. So please help me give a warm coffee chat welcome to Jordan Carson as I pull her on. And there she is. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Cindy. Oh, it is such a pleasure to be sharing coffee with you and everyone else again. You're such a light. Oh, as are you. And it's fun to see we have friends from Michigan, Canada, all sorts of friends joining us live to talk about this important topic. So during the last time you and I were together, it was in real life. We never would have guessed that we would be in the midst of a pandemic just to fill me in as well as all of our viewers. How are you? How is this beautiful family that I mentioned? How have you been surviving this new COVID culture that we're in? Yeah, you know, I think just like everyone else, taking it one day at a time, I'm I'm so blessed. I mean, I have um, a beautiful daughter um, who is the love of my life, along with my husband. Um, but yeah, just I, super blessed. You know, every day if we have little hurdles and little struggles to go through, they could be big or small. Um, I always remind myself, you know, what I got up today, I'm able to see, I'm able to hear, um, I'm able to do so many things that maybe other people don't have the opportunity to do. So I'm blessed. That's how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Attitude is everything. And you always are able to find the good with the attitude. So as we think about the pandemic, it's been it's been hard, it's been challenging, but especially for today's 
girls and mental health challenges on the rise. You know, we know that anxiety increases in times of uncertainty and everything is uncertain these days. And I've heard you share about some of the mental health struggles that you have walked through in your own personal life. So love your authenticity and vulnerability. And for those that just know you from TV or from your beautiful social media posts, I wonder, would you share with us just a little bit of some of the mental health struggles that you have gone through? Yeah. Um, you know, well, thank you again for inviting me to be a part of this uh, conversation. It is near and dear to my heart. You know, I think that everyone has uh, emotional and mental health struggles, um, whether they're small day-to-day -day struggles or if they're larger um, struggles that take a while to get through. Um, I think it's all okay. I think keeping that conversation going and talking about it um, can really help um, in many ways. But my biggest um, and personal mental health struggle started uh, 20 years ago when my only sister went through her own mental health struggle with an eating disorder. And mm -hmm. 20 years ago, um, I think we didn't know as much about eating disorders then as we do now. Um, I don't think it was talked about as much then mm -hmm. as it is now. And I think a huge stigma, I think there's still a stigma, but I think the stigma was much larger back then. Um, and there's a, a lot of misunderstandings about eating disorders. You know, I think a lot of people think that um, it's when someone looks in the mirror and they just think, okay, I'm not happy with my body, but it's so much more than that. This is a real mental health struggle, a real mental health disease and issue. Um, and it starts with our brain health. And I watched my sister go through that. Um, and in 2001, she lost her battle with anorexia mm -hmm. and bulimia, which is why I am such a huge advocate for um, promoting resources and helping to create a conversation and letting people know about the stigmas and what they need to be aware of um, and noticing the warning signs. So no one has to go through what me and my family went through because it was a long and it didn't end well, but I'm hoping to create positivity and helping other families mm. who may be struggling. Mm. So appreciate your family's desire to help others and to use your sister's journey to help bring hope and healing. And just as a, a tool of awareness, as you've shared, you even created a documentary that um, featured your sister's story. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that documentary and where we might find it? Absolutely. Thank you for asking. Asking, um, you know, when my sister was sick, and but my sister and I were very, very close. We're still very close. She's up in heaven, and uh, we talk often. Um, but when she was here and she was sick um, for years, she would always say, "You know, when I get better, I want to be able to help others. I want to be able to help girls and boys because this is not just something that affects girls, but um, predominantly girls and women." Uh, she said she wanted to get better to help others and help other girls and. And she unfortunately didn't have that opportunity. So I felt like that was my job and it is still my job. And I will probably feel that way my entire life is to be able to spread awareness. And, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physician or a nutritionist, but my family's been there and I know that I can help others. And that's what I've been trying to do for years. And so I produced a uh, documentary um, at Wood TV 8 and uh, I spoke to my sister's dietitians and nutritionists and therapists traveled to Chicago um, and did some of these interviews. I also um, was able to, my hardest interview that I've ever done to date, um, I interviewed my mom mm. about losing her daughter to an eating disorder and um, what other people need to know, what other moms need to know about spotting this. You know, my family and I are so, so close. We've always been so, so close. And so I think that was, um, one of the most difficult parts about this for my parents and for me was that I didn't notice that there was a problem or an issue until when we did, it was so late, it was too late. Um, even though my sister had gone into um, eating disorder treatments and um, she was inpatient um, at some of the best facilities um, around the country, when we noticed it was too late, it is such a secretive disease, 
Um, and so I produced this documentary um, and it is still, it still lives online now. Um, people can go in and watch it. And it's really talking about the myths and the misconceptions, some of the warning signs that you might not know about, and then resources as to how families and individuals can, can get help, whether it's here in Grand Rapids or beyond the state lines. Mm. So the title again is Dying to be Thin. We've put the link in our comments and as Jordan mentioned, you can find it online or we'll make it really simple. We encourage you to, to take a moment to watch it and to share it with a friend as well. Jordan, I would trust that our viewers and our viewers are coming in from South Carolina, California, Susie here in Michigan, all over the place. Um, and these are our live viewers. We know that we'll have a, a, a lot more that will watch the replay as well. So we're gonna watch it, but I wonder if you can just almost give us a Cliff's Note version as well. What are some of those basic myths that we believe when it comes to the important topic of eating disorders? You know, Cindy, there are so many myths. Um, I think one of the largest myths that, um, that I know of is that when you hear of someone who's struggling with an eating disorder, often people believe that this individual is looking in the mirror and saying, oh, I'm overweight. I'm not liking what I'm seeing. I need to, you know, change this. And that's why I don't, I'm not eating or, um, or perhaps I'm purging. Um, that is such a huge misconception. This is a mental health disorder where someone is really just looking to take control of something in their life. Um, Usually this is affecting people that have type A personalities, um, people that are very busy, that um, have a lot of friends, people that are um, um, very active in the community, um, you know, people that you would really not ever guess that there was a problem. Um, and these people are looking for something to kind of hold on to and to be able to control. And it is a mental illness, like I, I said. And mm -hmm. I think that's so important for people to realize this is not just a physical um, illness, it is a mental health disorder. Um, and so I think that's one of the largest misconceptions. People would always say to me, you know, well, why didn't you just tell your sister to eat a cheeseburger, eat a hamburger? And, you know, that's, um, for someone who's lost someone um, with an eating disorder, that's very one hurtful. I think things that we say we need to be very cognizant of. Um, another thing that I'm so, so passionate about is I have a little girl and I think every mom wants the best for their children. They want their child to have more than they ever had and to be a better person than, than they are. And, and I think one of the things, and I hear it all the time, is for moms to really be cognizant, moms and dads, to be cognizant of the things they're saying. Um, none of us think we're perfect, and that's okay, because that's how we were made. Um, but I think that when we look in the mirror and we talk bad about ourselves and our hair and, and the way maybe our clothing um, is fitting us, little ones are listening. They are hearing it and we could just think to ourselves, you know what, I just said this little tiny thing and it wasn't even a big deal and we went on with our day. But for a child who's looking up to you and listening to everything, they're sponges. And um, I see it often where adults say things and they don't think about it. And every time it really strikes me, um, it's very personal to me. Um, I don't know when or where my sister started developing. Um, you know, these mental health issues, but it could have been social media. It could have been through the media. I think the media, um, many, not all media have done a huge injustice to, to young girls um, when it comes to body image, um, magazines as well, and obviously social media. And so for parents to just be more involved and to be more cognizant of what they're saying, cognizant of their, their surroundings, um, and just how they talk about themselves and about other people. You know, I would never look at someone and say, well, she shouldn't have been wearing that. You know, she's a nice person. Talk about someone's personality, um, the light that they shed on other people. Don't talk about the way that someone looks because that is such a very, very, very small part of who we really are. Absolutely. Monica from Canada is saying, not a good thing to say, does this make me look fat? And I think all of us can just be more aware of the way that we're talking, not just to other people, but talking to ourselves. Because you're right, there are little eyes and ears watching and listening at all times. I can't imagine what that was like to interview your mom. 
such a personal topic, just so um, heart wrenching, heart touching. If your mom was here today and there was another mom that would say, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what is normal, when do I call for help? What words would you share, Jordan, now as a mom, not just as a sister, but now as a mom, what words would you share with a mom who's wondering if this is just normal or is it time to maybe ask for help for her daughter? You know, like I said, I'm not a doctor. Um, in my personal opinion, I think as a mom, if you believe that something is going on, then something probably is going on. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with sitting down and talking about your concerns. One of my biggest things I always try to tell moms and other people who are thinking about, you know, should I, and people use the word confront my friend. I, I don't really feel like it's, it's you're confronting them. Um, I feel that it's you saying that, hey, I'm, I'm noticing these things and it's been um, on my mind because you're so special to me. Um, I think it's all in the delivery. And I think instead of pointing fingers and saying, I've noticed you've been doing this, I've noticed you haven't been eating and I've noticed you've been going to the bathroom after eating, it's more of take it on yourself and it doesn't seem so offen offensive. Um, you know, I've been noticing mm -hmm. that there's been some changes and I've been really missing, you know, the person that I love so much. And I'm wondering if there's something I can do to help, you know, um, putting a lot back on you and saying, I love you so much as a friend, as, you know, as a mother, I love you more than anything in the world. Like, how can I help? I'm noticing that you're pulling away from your friends or you're not doing activities that you've always loved. Um, talk to me. I'm here. You know, I think it's all about the way that you present the questions and the concern. I think that is how you're going to get a better, um, a better result. And mm -hmm. I think my mom would agree. Mm -hmm. Such great wisdom, Jordan. Thank you. Just leaning in, listening, having that conversation and asking questions mm -hmm. in love. I too am not a doctor, therapist, any anywhere close, but as a mom, I know I have two daughters and both have struggled with different challenges regarding um, food, eating disorders, weight. In fact, my five-year-old daughter was diagnosed with an eating disorder kindergarten when she was five. She's now in high school when she was five. And so I just want to say to a mom that's listening, there's no shame, as Jordan mentioned earlier, um, we have to remember that with the message of Jesus is shame off you, not shame on you. And so it was very humbling for me, but I noticed my daughter had stopped eating and learned that some boys on the playground were calling other girls fat and my daughter didn't want to be called fat or teased. And so she decided she would just stop eating. And that's how it started in her life. So thankfully I, I noticed, wow, that her clothes that they're not fitting, she's not eating, was able to talk to our pediatrician and she started to do some of the head work to help my daughter realize that um, you, you need to eat and it's not gonna make you fat. So again, just to any mom or um, grandma or a relative that's listening, I, I just think that it's important for us as women um, it's not bad parenting. It, part of it is, is our culture that we're li living in. It's not easy to be a girl today, but we can link arms and we can help this generation so that they can, as you were sharing, Jordan, will you say that one more time? It starts with our thoughts. So when we think different and then we, how, how, you, how did you say that so beautifully? You think different oh. and then you act. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was, I bet they put it in the know exactly what I, you know, I think our thoughts become our actions yes, and our yes. actions become, you know, our words. And, and yes. I think when we start thinking positive thoughts and we stop ta thinking badly about ourselves and about others, um, then we start to really show that to other people. And we just start a ripple effect of positivity instead of judging ourselves and judging others. Yes. So beautiful. That's exactly what I've heard you say before. So thank you for repeating that again. Yeah. As we're talking to women today, and these are women that are moms, mentors, and ministry leaders. We're also women and we also are living in this culture that puts a lot of emphasis on the outside and then you throw in social media. It's not easy being a girl and it's not easy being a woman in the year 2021 either. Jordan, I wonder what wisdom would you share to a woman who maybe is struggling, who with the sunshine think, 
oh no, short season, season, bathing suit season, and who wrestles with those thoughts herself. Any words of wisdom that you would share to our beautiful women listening today? You know, this is very, very personal opinion to me, but I have not gotten on a scale and I don't even know how many years, you know, when I go to the doctor, I jump on the scale um, because they make me, <laughs> but <laughs> I haven't personally gotten on a scale. I couldn't tell you how much I weigh. I don't ask at the doctor. Um, I wish that other women could just um, not worry so much about what we look like. And I know that's hard. Trust me. I know I work on TV every every single day. Um, and I have to remind myself, um, but I wish that women would, would concentrate on the way they're feeling instead of what the scale says. Um, you know, so we gain a couple pounds. So we've gained a little weight during COVID. It's like in the big grand scheme of life, is that really that important? Um, you know, I just find that there's so many other things that are so much more important. Um, and I'm not going to get choked up here, but gosh, we are so blessed. We are so, so blessed. And I think that putting ourselves down and thinking badly about maybe a couple pounds that we've gained. I don't care if it's a couple. I don't care if it's 20. It's like, is it really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of life? And mm -hmm. we could be using our energy for such greater, more positive things than jumping on a scale and worried about getting that weight off before short season, um, before the summer. It's like, take some extra walks with your daughter and don't concentrate on how many calories did I burn during that walk. Concentrate on that conversation was so great. And that was, we always do the peak in the pit of my day at the end of the day, my daughter and I, um, and maybe that's the peak of your day. And maybe that starts a new conversation with, with your daughter or with your friend and, you know, that's what's more important than than watching how many calories you've burned that day. I love it. Peak or pit. And the peak can be leaning in and listening <laughs> and focusing on others. Such 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 a great reminder. And friend, I just want to remind you to our coffee chat listeners, your worth is not equal to your weight that you are loved, period, just the way that you are. And friend, in case you gained the COVID-19, you're not the only one. And so I love your advice, Jordan. Just get out, enjoy the fresh air, and focus on conversations and focusing on others. Jordan, I see your nice black coffee there. Tell us, Coffee Chats, we like to talk about what we're drinking. What are you drinking these days? So I am a coffee lover. <laughs> I drink so much coffee, Cindy. But um, this is just a Big B coffee. Um, Big B is started here in Michigan. And so I like supporting local. Um, and it's just a brewed coffee, just black coffee. Um, sometimes I'll put some almond milk in it. But this is my um, third cup of the day. <laughs> We don't count here. We don't count. So <laughs> remember, we're not focusing on the numbers. So love it. Love it. Jordan, how can our listeners um, connect with you? So again, dying to be thin, we wouldn't want everyone to watch that documentary. Share it so that your friends and family can watch it as well. How else might um, someone here today reach out to you, especially if they're not from West Michigan? Um, how, how can they connect with your important message? Yeah. You know, I'm really active on social media. Um, you know, Facebook is like my number one. I'm also on Instagram and just under Jordan Carson. Um, my avatar is my my face. And, um, you know, people ask me questions often about um, a friend or someone they know that is possibly struggling. And they say, I don't know what to do. What are the first steps? I am happy to um, give my advice, my opinion, and, and then also give you resources. Um, you know, I, I can't. I'm not a doctor, like I said, but I definitely can extend my arms and, and tell you where you can find um, the right resources, um, inpatient treatments, um, outpatient treatments here in West Michigan, um, as well as out of the state. And so um, there are resources available. And I think there are a lot of resources on that Wood TV link um, that you mentioned where the documentary does live, um, Dying to be Thin. And I have a list of resources there. So people are more than welcome to join in. 
Fantastic, fantastic. So all the resources in our GEMS team, they're on the ball. They're already putting your contacts right there in the comments. Thank you so much, GEMS team. Jordan, I wanna give you a moment in just a second to kind of wrap us up and maybe you could look in the camera and speak to that woman who's feeling overwhelmed. Maybe she has, maybe she's a mom like you with a young daughter. Before you do, I wanna do a couple of special things um, to thank our sponsor, GEMS. So a couple of things that I have been thinking about through our conversation. If you are a mom, mentor, or ministry leader, and you're thinking about what Jordan said about thinking about what you're thinking about, we have these simple A to Z cards. It's the A to Z truth of who you are in Christ. And so one of the things that personally I found helpful with my girls is going through that list to remind them that the truth is, A, you're accepted just the way that you are, that you're beautiful, whether you look like the magazine or not, you're chosen, you've been handpicked by God all the way through Z. So it's great for a girl and for a mom to memorize God's truth because the world will always have different messages for us. So we get to choose, will we listen to the world or will we listen to God's word? So you'll find this on the GEMS website. And then also, this is so, so, so great for any mom or grandma that has a little girl that you're thinking, oh my goodness, Easter is right around the corner and I need to start to think about chocolate bunnies and Easter baskets. I've got this all, it's so simple for you, friends. We have this new activity box. It's our Celebrate Easter Shine Brightly activity box. And it's for girls ages 7 to 12. And it's all of the things that girls love from crafts, recipes, DIY things, um, coloring book, coloring pencils. In case you're like, I don't even know where pencils are these days. Everything that a girl needs plus a 10 day devotion to help focus on the real meaning of Easter. So if you're like, what am I gonna get my granddaughter this year? This would make it so simple for you. Everything that a girl loves. So instead of an Easter basket, you can grab an activity box. You'll also find those at GEMS. So the, I'm sure the GEMS team are putting the links in there, um, but just know that we are here to serve you as you're serving the girl in your life. So there's ever a way that we can come alongside of you. That's what we are here for. So again, thank you so much, Jordan. Thank you for sharing your sister's journey, your family's journal, your journey, your own journey, and how this impacted your mental health. And thank you for being a light in our community and beyond. So as we wrap up, I just wonder if you could share a word of encouragement or, or hope with the women that are watching right now. Yeah. So thank you again so much for having me, Cindy. I adore you. Um, you're such a bright light everywhere you go. Um, and I'm just honored to know you. Um, you know, for women that are watching, I would just say we are all so special. And I know that sounds so cliche, but it is so true. And we were all made perfectly the way we are. And I try to tell people it is, you know, one of my biggest advocacies is that we don't need to weigh our self-esteem. Um, I think that other girls are listening, other women are listening. We really do need to retrain our brains to think about all of the good that we have inside of us. And we can share that with the world. We don't need to concentrate on the things that are lacking. We need to concentrate on the things that we can give to help others and to lift others up and lift ourselves up because we are so worth it and our our weight and our looks are just such a such a small part of who we really are and it's really the beauty inside of us that matters mm, amen amen friend as jordan just shared you are worth it and to remember my coffee cup as a reminder <laughs> that you are loved period like jordan shared you don't have to lose weight or earn it or go on social media loved period that is who you are. So thanks so much for joining the coffee chat. If this message was helpful to you, I'd encourage you to share it. There may be another woman out there who needs that reminder that she's worth it and that she's loved regardless of what the scale says. So thanks so much. We'll see you again next Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And Jordan, thank you, thank you, thank you. We just salute you. Thanks for your courage and your Cheers authenticity. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. <laughs> Take care, friends. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.